Well, greetings, viewers, voyeurs, and welcome. You're with Got That Funk. Um, I really don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I've been profoundly disturbed by the uh, recent events uh, regarding um, not just the uh, killing of George Floyd, um, and others uh, which have come to light recently. Uh, but I'm much more disturbed about uh, what I see as um, a, a, a clear plan of action that, that is being put into place. And, you know, you can go off and say, oh, you know, you're just being a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, fair enough, whatever. I am. Fine. Um... And I'm going to be talking about these issues in much more, like, coherent detail with uh, a few other hosts tonight on The Breakfast Club. Um, but I did want to get my own feelings uh, down on this channel. Um, because, you know, I, I'm one of these people who, you know, I, I've always tried my entire life to consciously, like, not fall into dogmatic thinking. I try to treat my fellow human beings person to person on a one-on-one -on -one basis as much as I possibly can. I try not to really think of people in terms of their national origin or their ethnic origin or their religious background or whatever. Although I recognize those things as being a significant part of who they are, I don't see that as being all of who they are. That's certainly not all of who I am. I, 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 you know, People might identify me as a white guy. I don't really think of myself in racial terms at all. I, I, that's how other people see me. That's fine, I guess. I don't care. Uh, and I don't really care how, um, how you know, I, I, I realize I'm privileged to be able to not care, you know. And um, that's, that is one of the many facets of, of white privilege. I don't have to care what other people think of my race because it doesn't negatively affect me most of my life. I mean, I'm not saying it never has, but I mean, um, compared to uh, plenty of other people, many of whom are my friends, um, I've had it easy. And I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do about that. I, I don't know how to solve it. I don't feel good about it um, when I have been the beneficiary of white privilege. Um, I don't celebrate that. I, I don't feel guilty about it either, uh, insofar as, you know, um, like, like every single person watching this video, I was born into a system that I didn't have a goddamn thing to do with setting up. And as a regular citizen, someone who's not like running for office or anything like that, but just as a, as a, as a regular citizen, you know, my avenues to input towards my country are based on democratic means, obviously voting and demonstrating and writing your uh, elected representatives, um, something I've never actually done more than once, I don't think. Um, but, uh, you know, that option is there. And I suppose uh, that's one thing, I guess, that I'm definitely going to have to do as a result of, uh, I, I can't any longer sit by in the comfort of my own home and watch what's going on and go, God, you know, that really sucks. What a world, eh? I can't do it. On the other hand, I'm a man of peace. It's something that I believe down to the very core of my soul. And I will not raise up my arm or a weapon against another man or woman. I will not destroy property. And that's not because I think that property is so fucking sacred and, you know, that uh, this property destruction that's been going on, um, you know, uh, to me is unfortunate. And I don't support rioting of any kind, whether it's people being violent with towards one another or destruction of property. However, I fully understand the anger. Um, but I also think there's an awful lot to be suspicious about as regards to the violence that's going on right now. Um, I have seen, I can't even count how many videos... Uh, where there's literally not a black person in sight and there's white people ripping up shit all over the place. Clearly they've came prepared with hammers and fucking other uh, instruments to break shit. 
um, they came to riot. They didn't come to protest. You don't go to a protest with a hammer. You go to riot. You go to loot. You go to cause trouble. And I'm going to be talking about this more in the Breakfast Club tonight, but I have a very dark feeling that uh, this has all been planned and there's a bit of a coordinated thing going on right now. Because, what was it, like three weeks ago or less than three weeks ago, video surfaced of Ahmed Arbery being murdered. What, less than three or four days later, there was that, uh, that guy in Indianapolis, I can't even remember his name, um, but he was uh, being chased by the police and he decided to broadcast it live on Facebook and the cop, when he got shot and uh, hit the deck, the cop made a joke, you know, oh, it looks like it's going to have to be a closed casket funeral, homie, or something like that. And then two days after that, um, Breonna Taylor gets murdered in her own home by police officers that were plain clothes with a no-knock warrant. Are you kidding? She gets shot eight times. And then less than a week later, George Floyd is murdered live. Well, maybe not live or broadcast live, but he was murdered on multiple cameras from multiple angles. And you could see the look on that cop's face. He did not give a fuck. There were people around him begging him to stop, begging him to let up, at least let the man breathe, all that kind of stuff. Those cops didn't give a shit. They were there for the purpose of doing this. I will never believe otherwise. So to me, it was a cold calculated murder. And I think that these, these things have come boom, 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 right in a row. And, you know, you might just say, hey, Paul, you know, that's, these are isolated incidents and, and, you know, that it, it, this is just, the, this is just the pitch of how bad it's getting in America right now. And maybe. Or maybe there, uh, why did it take 74 days for the tape of Ahmed Arbery to come out? The fact that this is all happening, A, in an election year full stop, should make us all suspicious anyway. But B, um, the, the closer we're getting to the election and the fact that we just had the timing where these people have showed up uh, for protests with weapons and the cops have more or less stood down, uh, well, totally stood down in some cases, and... Um, and then you have people, the first day of protesting in Minneapolis, there are just people marching with signs, as far as I saw. Um, and then cops started spraying tear gas and rubber bullets at people. Now, maybe the violence started before that, but I'm always suspicious about it when, uh, when violence erupts at a demonstration. As an activist myself, I've been at demonstrations where people have started, to, well, attempted to start violence. And fortunately, at the... Uh, uh, um, demonstrations I've been at that they have failed um, and it's happened in, in two demonstrations that I've been at both in London that's the only place I've ever really been uh, demonstrating significantly and um, you know to their credit the Metropolitan Police especially on the second occasion um, kept the riots from happening and the people who were trying to instigate riots in that instance were on both sides there were definitely people from the uh, what I would call the fascist brigade coming down and trying to ruck with us. We were the counter protesters to them, but we didn't try to interrupt their protest, but they were coming down and, and trying to riot on us. But there were also some, uh, in quotation marks, um, Antifa people. And by Antifa, I only mean the fact that these people were wearing masks and clearly came to cause trouble. They had smoke bombs and other things and they were throwing them at the police and everything. And there are literally hundreds of people urging them not to do it. So they didn't come there to be part of the protest. There's always the, the, the thing about demonstrations and one of the reasons which I'm going to talk about tonight in the Breakfast Club, uh, why we should um, try not to have demonstrations in the first place is because it provides a, an easy cover for people who want to make trouble, whether that's looting or people with some kind of other political or social agenda. It's very easy to cause trouble when there's thousands and thousands of people in one place. And it's also really difficult to responsibly ascribe blame for it, um, especially like right now what's going on in America. Uh, there's so many instances where you can see people uh, and, and literally there's not a black person in sight, but there's people riding all over the place um, and they're using this instance and they're going to uh, the media will, I guarantee, try to paint this as some sort of racial problem and, 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 and the, the, the rioting is all being done uh, 
by protesters who are who are um, in support of minorities not wanting to be killed, black people not wanting to be killed. In this instance, because in all four of the instances I just mentioned, uh, they were black Americans getting killed. And um, I'm not cool with that in any way, shape, fashion, or form, obviously. Uh, but more to the point, um, I see this, uh, you know, the, the, these white supremacists have been itching for a race war in America for an awfully long time. And I see the combination of events has timed itself in such a way especially with the oncoming election, now less than six months away, um, none of this bodes very well. I'm highly suspicious. Be suspicious. Be suspicious. So anyway, back to my original point, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm hoping, uh, looking forward to, I'm planning, I'm, you know, I am in motion towards moving to Colorado uh, in about a month's time, in fact, a month from today. And um, when I get to America, I will finally be able to be an activist uh, in my country for my country. Um, but as I said, under no circumstances will I um, participate in or condone uh, acts of violence against people or property. Um, I am understanding to a certain degree. I absolutely understand people's anger. And I also understand that, uh, as Dr. Cornell West said on CNN, um, it seems to be it seems to be the case that we have now proven that we can't fix the system from the inside. And if one accepts that premise, that raises some pretty dark conclusions about what has to happen as we move forward. Um, are we going to have to separate America? Into, into into separate Americas as uh, as they wanted to do back in the Civil War. I don't think that's the right answer. I absolutely think it's the wrongest possible answer. But I know there's going to be voices saying shit like that. There's also going to be voices saying, you know, um, well, basically uh, in favor of the previous status quo, which is not only untenable, but now it's more clearly evident than ever before to people who really were too obtuse to see it before. I hope you can see now that we live in a system which is not only inherently racist, racism is the system. It is, it is <laughs> uh, in favor in the United States of uh, the white majority. And I think that uh, there are certain elements of the white majority in America who um, are so used to their privilege that to them, equality feels like anti-white discrimination. And I don't know how you cure that. Um, on my channel a couple of years ago, I hosted um, John F. Kennedy's Civil Rights Address. And of course, that was in 1963, almost exactly 57 years ago. And um, when he gave that address, um, John F. Kennedy clearly understood uh, that people had not only the right to protest, but that their anger was justified. And he also understood that by protesting, it is inherently dangerous. And because of the inherent danger of protests, we need to address the issues. You can't just keep on letting this shit happen. It's not okay if the protests get more violent or less violent. It's not, it's not okay because <laughs> it's not just that you have the right to protest. If you're black in America, you have the right to live and enjoy every single privilege and right that every other American has, regardless of their fucking race, sex, or creed, or whatever. Everybody's supposed to be an equal in America. That's the fucking ideal. And it's not the fucking reality, and we need to make it the reality. And I'm going to do whatever I can within my own moral conscience to not just sit on my hands and hope for the best. That's not good enough. Not for me, and I hope it's not good enough for you. Um, now, I know there's going to be some people going out there, oh, you know, fuck you, got that funk. All you want to do is fucking 10-minute video, fucking 15-minute video of you virtue signaling or whatever. Fuck you. Uh, uh, anytime you state an opinion, as far as I'm concerned, that is supposedly the virtue signaling because everybody states the, the opinion they think is right. And if you think it's right, therefore, you're being virtuous by stating that opinion. So all opinion stating is virtue signaling as far as I'm concerned. And quite honestly... I think being not racist or against racism is worth virtue signaling about. I 
oppose racism in all of its manifestations from whatever group towards whatever group, and I'm ashamed of myself if and when I catch myself falling into racist dogma. I'll own my shit. I want to be a better person. I want to make a better world. What about you?